You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 17th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from just outside the Clarence Thomas pubic hair on my Pepsi time travel prayer circle. It's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. My goodness, times have changed. Yes, they sure have. Golly. I- I'm waiting for those Confederate monuments to be replaced with a statue of Anita Hill. For real. Yeah. For yeah. real. Uh Uh, Quite a day started out with Al Franken. We're recording on Thursday. Al Franken, uh, this picture, rather incriminating picture of Al Franken coming out. Mm -hmm. Uh, The latest I've heard is from Keith Oldman's Twitter stream where uh, he apologized to to a lot of people's satisfaction. Uh, Uh He is cooperating with an ethics investigation. Including the woman who uh, accused him. The the woman who accused him has accepted his apology and says she does not want him to resign. Oh, and oh. Uh, there'll be an ethics investigation. Yes, which he will cooperate with fully. He will cooperate with fully. Um, it is not clear whether she is going to cooperate fully, and I'm not going to pass any judgment on that at all. Uh, nope. But sh- uh, she did say she did not want to participate in uh, an ethics investigation about it. So that was interesting. And uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, that was sort of a news cycle in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, you know what I found kind of interesting? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a member of the patriarchy and it's my job to sort of <laughs> shove my way in here and yeah. intrude my opinion upon everyone. Uh, first of all, um, that, yeah, uh, men are assholes. Uh, <laughs> and men this, can yeah, be no, assholes. You don't yeah. find anyone on the left defending his behavior. Well, that, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> that The two most predictable reactions were uh, uh, little wiggly wingnut scumbags like Ben Shapiro going, ah, liberals, we have you now. Oh, what do you do now, huh? You're trapped. We're all degenerates here. And and a whole bunch of, I want to say, Jonathan Chait type liberals. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I haven't read his thing yet. Who are like, oh no, if, if the Dems are going to fall, oh, if we don't condemn, oh, why must people, why can't we condemn people on our own side? And I look around going, you know, nobody is excusing this behavior. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. You really have swallowed the right wing narrative of us hook, line, and sinker, mm-hmm. even though you have a D after your name or a liberal after your name. You're freaking out that, oh, my God, you're going to screw it all up because you're not going to condemn out. You Fuck it. Yes, I'm going to condemn Alfred. Mm-hmm. I've got three of his books on my shelf. And he shouldn't have done it, and he should pay the price for it, whatever that price is. And he should inve- he should be investigated. And if it's a horrible offense, if it's if it's cast out worthy, he should be cast out of the Senate. I did say, Lou Gal, mm-hmm. I came down very firmly that he should resign his position at Air America. Air America stand by right it. away. Because <laughs> this was... 2008, right? This, or 2006. This, 2006. 2006. Okay. I think so... he was a newly elected senator, but not elected, but elected, but not elected. I'm not sure what his status was. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But hey, look, look, let let uh, let the chips fall where they may, and right. let let justice be done. Right. I don't know who thinks that we don't want to do that. I don't. I either. think that no. maybe you, when you hang out with degenerates your entire life, you think that everyone's a degenerate. Hmm. And I think when you spent all of your time you d- desperately defending Mm -hmm. the serial sexual predator um, named Donald Trump and a pedophile that your immediate reaction is that everyone is as fucked up as you are. And that's just kind of hilarious because. Well, and I think we also have to talk about, I'm not going to defend Al Franken's behavior in that, in any way. I'm done. We're done talking about that. Actually, we if it's, it's terrific, horrific and that's it. Uh, but the the fact is that we get caught up in this right wing propaganda weaponizing information, and therefore, when Roy Moore has accuser after accuser after accuser right of them. Mm-hmm. saying the same thing, and there is proof that he signed a yearbook and and you know in in an inappropriate made an inappropriate message in his own writing, and he was banned from a mall. In Gadsden, Alabama, and by the way, just, hats uh, off to hats off to Charlie Pierce for um, the Cinnabon Don Juan. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know. and, and the campaign signs of Doug Jones. He he can go to any mall in Alabama. Yeah, 
He's that's he hasn't it. signed a yearbook since high school. You know. Yeah, that's just good writing. You know. Uh, but but this pattern of behavior and it be, the reason that these uh, the the right then goes and looks for left wingers to accuse and does the what aboutism. Yes, is, which is the half brother of both siderism. Both siderism, absolutely. They're they're cousins, ab- absolutely. Is not necessarily to catch a liberal in any kind of a trap, oh. but to lessen right. the crime that the right wing person has definitely committed. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I mean, we could go on for three podcasts about how Fox News and Sean Hannity in particular will not let go of Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. No. Forever. And, and, and there are I people like... calling for Hillary Clinton's impeachment over. <laughs> yeah. There was there was a Twitter thread today of people no. calling Jimmy for Kimmel. Hillary Clinton to be impeached. Or was was that it? Was it Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel? Kimmel? Yeah. Do you think I she should be impeached? It. Yeah, she should be impeached for <laughs> we're a crime. Oh, where do I start? So many crimes. So many crimes. And the last guy pub- said public office. Right. That's you know. That's <laughs> you stick a microphone out and ask people questions about Hillary Clinton who have an R after the name. You're getting a lot of stupid answers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I got to say, and this is where um, I am grateful every day mm-hmm. for our uh, listeners and yes, supporters. Yes, I am too. Yeah. Uh, and I'm grateful every day that I don't have to take orders from Liberal Central Command. No, exactly. Um, exactly. Because uh, a couple Wherever days ago. Wherever that is. I mean. Yeah, we're, well, it's somewhere in California and New York. <laughs> Uh, oh, it, I see. It, it by locates <laughs> in DC and a little bit in Atlanta, but you're, you're talking def- about something specific that I don't know about. No, no, the the fact that that Chris Hayes of MSNBC uh-huh. decided to be Mister Helpful uh-huh. uh, and decided that it's 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 high time liberals faced up to what Bill Clinton did and really you know discussed it because now is the perfect time to do that. Um, and thanks, Mister Helpful. Yeah. Uh, and there's the whole bunch of things that we can talk about there, but the number one thing was, of course. This was now, that tweet was mm-hmm. now the centerpiece of Sean Hannity's half hour long rant about Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and Uranium One and even Chris Hayes, even the liberal Chris Hayes admits. And it's just it's why are weaponizing you, information why are over you and over again because that's what propaganda does. Right. And Sean Hannity is paid over $2 million a month to do that. To make people feel a certain way. It is not news. It is, well, it it is, is a propaganda. Certain, That's... There's a certain very privileged level of um, liberalism mm-hmm. that that just can't help itself. Right. That right. just can't. Well, you know what? And I doesn't think know the war some. they're fighting. I think they don't know the war they're fighting. Well, I think they're fighting. I think the, when you live in an, yeah, an exclusive right. neighborhood in D.C. Mm-hmm. and you, you're paid a shit ton of money by a network. And none of this will affect you ever in any way. You'll, mm-hmm. you, you'll never lose a night's sleep worrying about your kid's insurance. Mm-hmm. You'll never be mm-hmm. freaked out over your, your somebody kicking down your door, taking your, your life away from you. That this is just a game. Now it's a yeah. game you believe in. Yeah. But you know what? I think it's high time we talked about Bill Clinton some more because that didn't get discussed enough. Right. So, and he right. wasn't impeached for it. Yes, he was. Right. Well, now, and that's what I want to talk about just a little bit mm-hmm. um, because I dropped the word of standards. And I'd like to mention that before we talk about sure. our – Many fine fake advertisers yeah. we, we, we love dearly. <laughs> this is something you can't fit into 140 characters or 280 characters, and it's something that you're not going to hear on um, any talk show anywhere. Any, any, and it's this. It's sort of an, a slightly extended version of what really pisses me off about this. Hmm. It's, it's look, and I've said this before on, on this podcast, and I know I'll say it again. The, the discussion about Bill Clinton's sexual behavior is a perfectly legitimate one. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with that. Here's what I have a problem with. Republicans set a standard for judging presidents mm-hmm. in 1996. When Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh took over the Republican Party, the standard Republicans set for judging all future presidents, because that's what you do when you, st- when you lay down a you know, marker. This is how we're going to do it. Any offense, any hint, any whisper of anything at all, we're going to investigate um, to the full extent of the law. We're going to subpoena everyone. Every little crackpot fishing shack rumor in Arkansas is legitimate fodder for congressional investigation because that's what we got to do because that's how high a standard we must set for all future presidents. Robert Fisk, remember, there was a special prosecutor named Robert Fisk who came back and said, there's nothing here. So they fired his ass and they hired Ken Starr and basically mm-hmm. gave him a bag of money and said, go find something. All right. That's the standard, right? Mm-hmm. That's the standard. 
So we have now set a standard by which all future presidents are going to be judged. If there's a whiff of a hint of a scandal, no matter what source it comes from, you, you subpoena the shit out of everybody and put everybody on the stand and investigate the fuck out of it, even if it shuts the government down. That's the standard. Right up until George Bush lies us into Iraq. I was going to say, Dirk Glass, there, there was a Republican standard for um, budgets and debt and deficits exactly. And, exactly. Uh, but I do. I do want to stick to this. Just, just I, I do. I understand, but you understand uh-huh. that the Republican double standard isn't limited to. Oh, of course not. No, no, it's it's universal. But that's the yeah. point. The yeah. point is, for everyone who's freaking out about why are we talking about Bill Clinton? Everything happened yesterday. Yeah. Right. There right. is no past at all. This the '90s never happened. The 2000s these never happened. This long arc of every time a Republican president steals the White House, which is what's happened the last two times in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, everything Republicans said was – remember, they controlled the levers. They're the ones who said, we have to do this. We have to impeach. We have to investigate. We have to drag his family through the mud. We have to slander him. We have to put everyone who ever worked at the White House under subpoena and break them with legal bills. We have to do it because those brave men and women over in the no-fly zone, Blue Gal, right. are defending the Constitution. Well, this is, this insult. Is the, the standard is that um, this is America and we have to be – It would be an insult yeah. to our brave men and women in uniform right. if we didn't do this. The president of the United States has to be held to the absolute highest standard, right? Right until the president of the United States is George Bush. Right. And then every an single thing he said name. is tossed yeah. out the window. Yeah. And the pre- this is the part that kills me. And the media goes right along with That's it. That's the part that kills me, It goes too. right yeah. along with it. Oh, yeah. suddenly it's, it's, it is a treason to say a bad word about George Bush. Is that, what's wrong with you? Why don't you love America, Blue Gale? What sort of liberal mm-hmm. traitor are you that you don't understand our commander-in-chief is the commander in chief, and we're having a fucking war here. We're fighting a war, and 9/11 changed everything, Blue Gal. And deficits don't matter anymore because 9/11 changed everything. Go out and shop, and shut up, and and salute the flag, and just be quiet. And it doesn't matter that he lied and cheated and fucked up and lost an entire city and and blew up the deficit and did all the horrible things that Republicans claim to care about. Yeah, so that's and this standard. is why this is in part why I had a complete and utter meltdown last night. And right. I keep I hate to come on the podcast and sound okay and tell you in that during the week I lost it. But during the um, week was... part of it I was part of it I was sick and part yeah. of it was just uh the tax bill being as bad as it is for anyone making under seventy five thousand dollars a year. Uh, and uh then for some reason seeing uh Mr. and Mrs. Mnuchin in their designer duds smiling at dollar bill signed by him and isn't that wonderful yes. and to me i mean twitter had a great time with it and ma- made fun of it these people think that because they're beautiful people that they're doing you a favor by having their picture taken for the public that this is a, putting a good face on it and it's it's just louis the, the 14th like, all over again it's yeah. marie antoinette it's everything yes. bad about bad optics that seriously, <laughs> I'm just well, thinking and- that Mitt Romney is eating his heart out right now because what he did with the 47 percent and yeah. holding up hundred dollar bills was yeah. nothing. Well, Jeff Gannon is kicking himself. Yeah. Because all he yeah. did was was to be a male prostitute who lied about it to get into the White House and suck yeah. up to George yeah. Bush. Yeah. I mean, that's he, they'd make him secretary of state at this point. Right. He'd be he'd be director of the budget after they they they're going to move the budget director over to uh uh Take care of the banking, you know. Yeah, the take care of the consumer consumers. protection. Right, yeah. He can do both jobs, sure. sure. Why not? Why not? And he can um, be secretary of HUD because maybe that too. Ugh. But but my point being that um, the Republicans keep setting standards and 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 then jettisoning them Ooh. the minute the party political parties change. Liberals don't do that. No, they don't. No. Yeah. We we do have a pretty rigid set of standards. We do we should we do kind of we're a little flexible around the edges and we do change. We do evolve. Bill Clinton, the worst thing he ever did, from my point of view, is sign in the Defense of Marriage Act yep. and and uh, uh, yep. uh, welfare reform and yep. and NAFTA and GATT. He did a whole bunch of shit that I think he was uh, absolutely egregious about, and that that I have never forgiven him for. But let's not forget that was twenty years ago. Yeah. And yeah. things have changed. And ever since, and but ever since then, the standard has been: we're going to have one set of standards for Democrats when they're in office, and we're going to scream like bloody murder. And and mm-hmm. we'll agree to them. Great. Yeah. You want to hold presidents to the highest possible standard? Let's all do that thing, right yeah. up until it becomes a Republican president. Then yeah. we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah. And the press just rolls over, spreads its legs, and says, "Hey, fuck, take us. We don't care right. because right. there's no percentage." in trying to enforce standards on Republicans because they'll just 
put Sarah Sanders up and lie to your face. Right, right. And you and you and and the and thing if you want to go to the White House Correspondents' Dinner next year, and you want to be have access to Steve Mnuchin on the budget, if you want to have a quote from an anonymous source in the White House, and we all know who that is, uh, you're you're if you want that because and you know who invented that was George Bush. Yes. George Bush invented the lapdog press by yes, did. by consciously and openly cutting off access to reporters that didn't quote unquote behave themselves. Yeah. If you crossed a line with him on asking a question that he didn't want to hear, mm-hmm. you were out. And so they learned that you have to be polite and prof- quote unquote professional. And Chris Lizzo. Yeah, yeah. Chris Lizzo. Yeah. <laughs> And but at the end of the day, the, the, this scam only works because yeah. there are 60 million Americans who go along with it every election. 38 percent. Yep. And, yep. and who and, absolutely are completely OK with that, who believe that Barack Obama was never born here. St- most of them still believe that, mm-hmm. who believe he was mm-hmm. trying to murder you every day that he was in office, who believe he had nothing but the hatred in his heart for America. He was yep. trying to sell us out to the Muslim Brotherhood, which he was a secretly a part of, who believe every bit of that and believe he yep. should have been impeached for all of it. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. minute their racist, lunatic, right-wing fire god is elected, all goes out the window. And which is – that's fine for a political party to play that game. Hey, if you can get away with it, that's fine. It's not on the Republicans. The Republicans are, are, are basically um, degenerates in their heart. I mean this is who they are. Mm-hmm. They're not anything other than this big shit pile of racists and homophobes and demagogues and gun nuts and theocrats and imbeciles. That's who they are is on the media and the rest of the country to point at them and say, holy shit, look at that big pile of assholes over there. Right. They and just raised is, your taxes. Why don't we why aren't we talking about that? They just that stopped your children's health insurance from happening. Yeah. They, and they'll yeah. only do it in the context of let's talk about Bill Clinton too. Yeah. Well, okay, right. sure. Right. If, if what you're saying is we should investigate Donald Trump every single thing he does and hold him accountable for every single thing he does mm-hmm. and put him on the fucking stand tomorrow. And let's see Ivanka's and, and, and Ivana's running. Christmas card list, right. everything down to there. And who should yeah. lead that charge? Republicans should, because yeah. they're the ones who believe presidents should be held to that high standard. Yeah. yeah. Except they don't. Yeah. And and so at that point, this is twenty years ago, this mm-hmm. this this idiot lie. Yeah, this yeah. bullshit the Republicans are anything other than degenerate liars fell apart. And it's yeah. only propped up because the, our media will not point a camera at one of the two political parties and said 90 percent of what's wrong with this country is those people over there. And once those people over there are contained and gradually drained away from our electoral system, our problems will go away. But for all of you undecideds out there and all of you independents <laughs> and all of you jerkwads who think it's both, it's not both sides. If mm-hmm. tomorrow morning the, the Beltway media got up and said, you know what, we're going to start pointing the camera at Donald Trump and, and Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan and say, they're the fucking problem. Mm-hmm. And we're going to stick to that story no matter what. These guys are the fucking problem. Once these guys go away, the problem goes away. Your tax problems goes away. Your college problem goes away. Immigration problem goes away. Mm-hmm. And we can solve all this shit. Right. But they are the fucking problem. We, we – uh need to remind people about the standard that Republicans set with Bill Clinton. And this is, I'm not trying to do whataboutism, but I just want to remind everyone that uh, um, David Vitter is still in the Senate. (laughs) Diaper boy David Vitter and Mark Sanford was elected to the House after this whole Bill Clinton high standard that they set for sexual uh, relationships in marriage and so forth. And of course, you know, today we have the Republican from Ohio who said it should only be natural marriage. We shouldn't have any anything that's not natural marriage. Natural marriage? Really? Yes. And of course, he had a gay tryst in his office. <laughs> not, I mean, come on. Come on. In your office? In the office building while you're at work? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, Drift Glass, I want to get back to my meltdown for a minute. I'm not going to indulge myself on this too much. It just was seeing... I call her Candy Mnuchin. She, that's not her real name, but that's what I'm going to call her. Uh, Candy Mnuchin and Steve Mnuchin fondling uh, sheets of one dollar bills, because you know that's the that's the attractive thing to do. It, it was enough, and I, I'd had enough. And realizing that you and I are paying, uh, you know, a huge amount next year for health insurance, and that that was done on purpose. 
by Republicans, by Donald Trump, to us and to lots of other people on purpose uh, to hurt us because we got we don't like Obama. That's really it. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, was was just so uh, beyond the pale to me. And to feel that sense of panic and torture about it and then realize, yes, the mainstream media is walking by and say, well, you know, both sides. Mm -hmm. While you're racked with pain over whether your children are going to have health insurance next year because the SHIP program, the CHIP program isn't renewed yet. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the both siderism and it's, and it really felt yesterday, like I can't write to my congressman because right. he he's care. a Republican in the pocket, not just of the Koch brothers, but he is a Republican whip for Paul Ryan and he will do nothing that Paul Ryan doesn't want him to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel hopeless about that. I mean, I can write him. He'll send me a four page letter, form letter. He's done that before, a four-page form letter about how we're really trying to grow the economy and give people choice. Mm -hmm. And we don't want anyone to be without insurance. We just want to give people more choices. You want to give people crap insurance that got, doesn't cover your asthma or my heart condition. That's what right. you want to do. Right. Uh, and that'll give me, yeah, that'll be cheap insurance. You're right. I can get really cheap insurance that doesn't give me any health care at all unless I get hit by a car. Uh, so there's that part of it. And then there's the part of it of just feeling like if I, if I write to my senators who are both Democrats, I mean, I can write them a thank you note right? Uh, for, for holding firm. But until we get these folks out of office, I really feel hopeless about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't like feeling hopeless. I actually asked you last night in tears, you know, what if we got 10,000 people to write to the Koch brothers and ask them to stop? Well, that's because the that's thing. where our politics is right now. <clears throat> the, the, the thing is, if these people were just, you know, rich, wastrel assholes. Yeah. Yeah. That would be one thing. Mm -hmm. But they're also fucking sadists. Exactly. They, they exactly. hurt. They it's hurt people. They yeah. hurt people like you and me and like millions of people who are weak and, and voiceless and terrified mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they like to. They like because to. Because that's yeah. what they yeah. enjoy. They fucking get off on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. we didn't just elect a bunch of, you know, rich snobs. We elected a bunch of, of sadists, right. a bunch of fucking right. monsters who really, really enjoy inflicting terror yeah. and fear on people who are weaker than them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, this Bullies. brings yep. – this is what brings them joy. Yeah. And this is the yeah. problem because it's not just them. It's the party that elected them. Yeah, it is the base of the party that elected well, the whole base is the 38%. But yeah, it's that the idea that all politics is is what's going to make liberals mad. And if we can make liberals cry, that's even better. And so it, it, politics becomes just this schoolyard fight of you're weaker than I am. We're in power and we're going to just slam you. Mm -hmm. And then when when there's a backlash and you get into power, we're going to hold you to a standard that we don't hold ourselves to. Right. And we're going to change. And that's the sign of, of a, a really uh, banana republic authoritarian mm -hmm. regime. Right. That And, this, and right. I'm not just referring to Trump. I'm referring to every time the Republicans get in power. It's we're going to change the standards. We're going to flip them 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. every, one of, every one of our bases is going to go right along with it, pretend that we never held any belief before this. We're going right. to do it out in public. We're going to show you our ass because there's nothing you can do to stop it. Ha ha, fuck you. We're, now deficits are okay. Yep. Remember and and, and the, the rule that we passed in the House to stop you from raising taxes, we're just going to waive it. Right. We're done. Because we know that the meat bags that are our our, our party members are uh, will never notice until until it hits them like a like a, somebody drops a house on them and then we'll blame some liberal. They'll blame Obama. And they're that yeah. they're that debased. They're that they're that underclocked. They're that completely brain dead that they won't notice. They're, we we worked so hard to create an army of morons this stupid and this reprogrammable, and now we're going to use them. Mm -hmm. And we get to do that. And and that is you know there's no subtlety to it. It's just fuck you, yeah. We we're, we're going to hurt you because we like to. You know what? We have a tax bill that's going to give a whole bunch of money to a bunch of rich people by by shutting down uh, by by taking a big bite out of Medicare. Yep, on um, purpose. You know what? On purpose. In addition, let's use the tax bill to fuck a bunch of people out of their health insurance by getting rid of, by by using it to get rid of Obamacare because that's fun too. And you know what? In the same week, let's make it cool to kill elephants and bring the bodies back to this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because Obama did it. Is there any reason? No, nope. we're just a bunch of sadistic, subhuman assholes, and you and 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 we run the country now, and and there's no dividing us because we're all this way. 
Mm-hmm. You know, they're mm-hmm. all fucking Negan, honey. <laughs> Go yeah. up to the yeah. average Republican, he's fucking Negan. Yeah. By the way, that's a Walking Dead reference. Right. Because every member of Negan's tribe, his sadistic tribe of the saviors, the people who club people and, and set them on fire and terrorize and abuse them, uh, they are broken to the point where they all are Negan. They're mm-hmm. all the leaders. They're inseparable. They're all, they have no individual identity anymore. They only have the identity of the leader. Yep. Yep. And that's what the Republican Party has become. And this is the this is the thing that really breaks my heart, because this sort of thing happens in countries usually where it's a totalitarian regime. You can just cut off the outside world. Yeah. You yeah. can just say, you know, we're going to put up a wall around the country, well, a physical wall around the country. We're going to shoot you if you try to leave. We're, we're going to censor the press. We're going to uh, cut off the Internet and we're only going to feed you propaganda and you really have no choice because there's no outside voice. In this country, all you have to do to break the spell is change the fucking channel. Right, right. These people do it to themselves. Mm-hmm. So I have, no, I have no pity for them. I have no mercy left in my heart for them. I just want them out of the way. I want them out of the way because they keep hurting people who are weaker than them. And they keep laughing about it and enjoying it. And people like that should have – there's a place for them in the world. But it is not anywhere near the levels of power. Well, so. and you and I encountered uh, uh, an Alabamian on Twitter today uh-huh. who uh, convinced his grandmother to vote Democratic for Doug Jones for the first time in her life. She's voting Democratic because the evidence against Roy Moore finally pierced her skull. Right. And his point was, these people are worth saving. They're human beings. Oh, and it's, it's just terrible that you guys are just calling them names and not... Trying to you know, reason with them and, you know, and down get them Alabama, over the other side. And, and well, let you me, let and me several back up. other – go ahead and back let, up. Let me yeah. just back up one second because his argument was mm-hmm. – um, and I'm, I'm actually observing this out of the corner of my eye on Twitter right now just kind of laughing my head off. His arg- And I don't usually bring Twitter stuff into the podcast because it's just shit on the men's room wall. I mean it's I just – I know. But this guy was like, you know, I'm trying to make a reasoned argument to this person in a little bit of a harsh voice that Mm -hmm. here is a bunch of stuff I've written and researched about dealing with Republicans for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I don't want to read that. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like this sounds like exactly the same kind of rhetoric that the other people in their bunker would say about you. Uh So really, Uh isn't it just both sides? It's just everyone's so angry. And you know what? I have a grandmother and she's a saint, I tell you. And she's a racist old bitch. And you know what? (laughs) Not to vote for a pedophile. And that's progress. Look, yeah. really, she drew really. the line. She drew the line at pedophile. So but his okay. bigotry and lack of respect for the law. Racism's OK. Uh, yeah. Taking people's rights away from them are OK. Stripping yeah. people's voting rights are OK. Calling yeah. uh, gays and, and transgender people unhuman. They're not worthy of human Banning rights. Banning Muslim all, Americans from the Congress is OK. That's yeah. all fine with Grandma yeah. Alabama. That's yep. just perfect. Yep. But yep. but and all she needed was absolute, unequivocal, universal proof from a, a Republican from woman. A Republican from woman. From a Republican woman. That right. This is, that also just like her. A yes. serial pedophile. Well, right, that, right. I got to draw the line there. Right, right. Really? You know right. what? The, the line you cross is about 20 miles behind you, bitch. Yep, yep. And you yep. have been over it your entire life. And if you think, and this is what I'm like, okay, in this one weird special circumstance where the multitude of heinous, horrendous, grotesque sins already on public display were not enough for granny to change your mind but pedophilia put it right over the line yeah you're I, right i, I want to reinforce that again a republican woman comes forth with written proof on right. camera right. and then she changes her vote right. and it's someone who's like her and if, if it had been re- a black woman or a muslim woman Nothing. or a young woman or someone anyone who was not in her fucking tribe right. putting that accusation for it, I guarantee you this would not this would not be the case. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, if I believe that politics, I know this from decades of experience, mm-hmm. politics is an opportunistic business. You take advantage of the opportunities that are handed to you. And I've seen my party absolutely punt on first down way too often mm-hmm. to know that they can't screw up, you know, a, a two car funeral. Right. So I get right. that. Right. My point being, look, hey, go with God, brother. If you can get one crazy racist granny in Alabama to flip her vote because of this one unique, never to be replicated circumstance Absolutely. in this case, yeah, yeah. go for it, man. Good. And go with yeah. it. I'll buy you a beer. But mm-hmm. don't 
please do not inductively reason from the specific to the general. You cannot take this one case of this one person under this extraordinary pressure and unique circumstances where where the where the wingnut media is telling cannot, her right when Sean Hannity. I mean, that's the other thing too. Did did she change her vote? We'll never know. Did she change her vote because she saw a woman just like her hold up a yearbook? Or, or did she decide that the line was, he lied God, to Sean Hannity? He lied to Sean Hannity, and that's Sean too far. Sean told me, you know, 24 hours, you got, you're got done. And so I go with Sean. And, and you're just, she's as much as a reprogram, of a reprogrammable meat stick as she ever was. Right. It's just she's listening to Sean instead of listening to Roy Moore. Right. And I don't have any respect for people who get all of their voting information from Sean Hannity. Excuse me. And if your if your political <laughs> argument is I'm going to rush in and flip as many votes as I can because this opportunity is like a total eclipse. I get it will it, it will not it. happen again yeah. in my lifetime, which yep. is not true. They happen all it. the time in space. Great. But this argument was, you see, they're persuadable. Well, no. you're missing the no. whole <laughs> point, man. You are really trying no, hard. Really. Activism, but, I'm all for his activism to go out and say, and, and this is what, let's let's talk for the, about this for a minute, because Doug Jones is not stupid, and Doug Jones is Alabamian. Mm -hmm. He knows those voters. Oh. And his ads this week have been plain folk right. saying, I'm a Republican, and I'm voting for Doug Jones right. because I'm a good moral person, and I know this is wrong. Yeah. And, and they're not talking— the word Democrat does not appear nope. in this nope. ad once. Nope. But you know what you know what word does appear, Drift Class? Jesus. Divisiveness. I don't like all the divisiveness like in this world. That. There's and too much divisiveness. And what they mean is your kids aren't talking politics with you at right. the dinner table because right. they think you're a bigot. Right. So this time you can say, I'm not gonna vote for Roy Moore because I don't like all the divides. You know, it's it's. I'm an independent. Well, I never liked the tweeting Donald Trump does. I, you know, I voted for him, but I never liked the tweeting. Mm -hmm. No, you are part of that Republican base that mm -hmm. when you heard some Mexicans are good people, but they send rapists, right. you went, "Wow, he's just saying what I'm thinking." Right. Well, my 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 dad's final wife. Yeah. Uh, would always lock her door and clutch her purse when we drove through the black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. But she knew this one guy. He was one of the good ones. Uh -huh. And, and uh -huh. you know, I, I know you, you lived in Alabama for what, 16 years? 14 years. 14, 14 years. years. Had yeah. three kids there. Your ex All three was... kids born there. He yeah. was the president of the ACLU of Alabama. So, yeah. so believe me, uh, you know, and I have had, I have lived in many, many neighborhoods yes. in my yes. life. I did never live in Alabama, but we are not, 12 years old and talking out of our ass. We've actually lived in the world and know how this oh, yeah. works. Yeah. And, and and my ex has made it very clear that huh? if you put equal rights for all people on the ballot in Alabama, it would not pass. Right. Because, because that's the who Republican they Republican Party of Alabama would make it about property taxes. Right. And it would never pass. And they that would be the it, there would be some sort of excuse of well if you're going to make people equal that means my uh, my taxes are going to go up because I have to support people who aren't me. Right. And well, and, sir, and that they would justify that in their prayers at night. Right. They believe Jesus is on their side. Yeah. Down to down. To, yeah. And here's here's one last little detail that I, I did here on the radio today. Um, Tom Steyer, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, liberal billionaire who likes to set fire to big piles of money for no good reason. <laughs> thank um, you, thank you to the podcast listener who sent a tweet to him saying, would you please support Drift Glass and Blue Gal yeah, on their podcast? Just, that was really you know, nice. <laughs> what, the last pile of money you set on fire, just just whatever blows away from that, whatever the rounding error is on that, whatever you, whatever the wad of money you needed to start that fire. We don't mind the smell of smoke on those, that, those no. dollars, no. <laughs> well, just the kindling, just the kindling for that fire. We'll take it. They, and they we'll, can even they can even be signed by Steve Mnuchin. Right, we, we don't care. That. We love that shit. <laughs> but apparently Tom Steyer blew in a call to the... Uh, to, to the Democratic uh, campaign headquarters in Alabama and said, can I can I send you some support? Can I send you some money? And they said, oh, fuck no. Are you kidding no. us? No. Really? Yeah. You want – the last thing we need is some last outside agitator. Is some outside agitator billionaire coming in and buying the election. Coming for, in and spending for, some yeah. of that California liberal really? lesbian really? Hollywood weirdo yeah. High money. High tech money, yes. You know, no. I bet yeah. you Harvey Weinstein jizzed all over that money, blue gal. <laughs> exactly. And that's, exactly. And that's the end of the election. And then you're done. Well, no, but he, they, but, they did the fake Jewish you yes. know, robocall, right? I'm, I'm Bernie Christ killer Osabian, <laughs> and I just want to <laughs> give you some money. In exchange for some information, yes. okay, and and it was it was like, but here's the thing, 
But here's the thing. That's all hilarious because it's so fucking jaded and um and cartoonish. Yep. But you know, when when Karl Rove ran the push poll campaign mm-hmm. against John McCain that destroyed his candidacy yep. in two thousand. Yep. About what do you in think South about Carolina. The fact that, that yeah. uh, John McCain has a secret black baby yep. born out of wedlock? Yep. He didn't run it as a random shot in the dark. He ran it because he knew exactly who he was talking to. Yeah. That, that these people know exactly who their voter bases are. And it is up to uh, and it's the denialists, it's the both siderists, it's the people who are the 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 cod pieces on this monster, the ones who the David Brooks of the world, if you don't mind, who who have this imaginary fantasy Republican Party. That doesn't exist anywhere in the universe. They want to talk about that Republican Party. And we want to talk about the actual Republican Party, the one that's burning down the country Mm -hmm. and the one that needs to be stopped. And if you can seize a political opportunity like this and flip one Senate seat in fucking Alabama. Alabama. Thank you. By by doing whatever's necessary to do that. Go with God. You have my complete support. If you want to call me a northern Yankee, crack a nonsense lunatic from go right ahead. Call call me a shit for brains. If it gets a Democrat in that seat, do whatever you need to do. That's great. But don't pretend that it's because these people suddenly developed soft hearts and an open mind and a willingness to listen. It's because somewhere way, way down at the bottom of the esophagus, there's still a little bit of a gag reflex. (laughs) And they're willing to swallow any tonnage of shit. And they have been swallowing tons of shit from Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and Bill O'Reilly for decades. Mm -hmm. And they've Mm -hmm. been loving it. They wallow in this shit. It sweats out their pores. They smell of this shit. But this one last little line they cannot cross. And that's the only lesson to take away from this is is you have to be that fucking publicly depraved Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. get – an Al- a Republican Alabama voter to think twice about voting for you. Yeah. That's and the- well, and, and the, she said the, ma- the the person accusing Roy Moore with the yearbook said the magic words, I voted for Trump. Yep, yep. And then they were willing to listen to her. Well, you know, one of those accusers well, did sign language <laughs> for Hillary campaign. For Hillary that's, campaign. That's an hour on they the Sean money. Hannity show. Yeah, right. Right. Sure. So, yeah, if you think you can make peace with these people, that's great. I suggest you swim out into the open water and, and talk to that shark and have a pleasant conversation with him. And, and when he takes your bites you in two, don't come crying to me. Mm-hmm. I warned you. We've warned you. Take your been, class. Yeah. It's time for Bible bitch. Bible bitch. That's not scriptural. Tis the season. Tis the season. Hey, uh, Bible Bitch is about Philippians 4, verse 6, which I would love everyone to go to Google on your phone and say, okay, G-O-O-G-L-E, so that your phone doesn't go off. Smart uh, and say Philippians 4, verse 6. And if your phone is like my phone, what you'll get is, according to Huffington Post, Philippians 4, verse 6 says... Yeah. <laughs> and when I heard that... Mm-hmm. I cracked up. That I was looking this morning on my phone because I was in bed sick and and dealing with uh, a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, yesterday, as I said last night, uh, you were. I was sick and I was also having a meltdown and I was sick and <laughs> Drift Glass put me to bed. He said, "That's it. You're not the working tomorrow." And your patriarchy stepped in. Patriarchy stepped in and told me what to do. Put me under some blankets and said, "Nope." And uh, you were. Kind, you were kind enough to email people that I was obligated to today, and uh, you said, "Nope, she's not going to be there." Well, then we we had to then we had the girls in for a chat. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, because my screaming had upset them, yeah. and I said, "No, I'm okay. I just need to go to bed now." <laughs> Yeah. Mom is not upset with you. She's upset with Donald Trump and Steve Mnuchin. She's not upset with anybody else. And I, I, I use uh, my best parenting skills to say, maybe if you were better daughters, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah. No, but they did need to hear that because yeah. I had kind of gotten loud in my rage. Yes. Um, so this morning I w- went on my phone to look for some uh, prayers uh, to get myself right. Um, and I came across... Uh, Philippians 4. And so I did do the uh, phone search for this verse. And uh, it did say, according to Huffington Post, this this book in the Bible says this. And I just, I couldn't believe that that was the internet, but it is. Uh, So Philippians 4 in the New International Version says, 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And the message, which is the modern version, uh, modern translation of the Bible that I read all the time, says, don't fret or worry instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. And what what I just wanted to add to those two versions um, is that Paul, when he wrote this, was in prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it's really important to read these letters from Paul um, as historical documents. Now, he was, he was there for um, like a drunk driving charge, right? No. No? No. <laughs> He was being persecuted for being following Jesus. Oh, yes. oh, and uh, oh. and preaching and so forth. And uh, there there are so many people uh, in Alabama <laughs> and around the country who hold up uh, books that have these letters in them and say this is the word of God. Yeah, you know this all everything in this book. This is the, the whole thing. The literal and inerrant the literal, word of God. Completely blah blah blah. Yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, that's not my approach. No. Um, but I do find. Uh, a lot of comfort and solace in. Um, we know that there was a church in Ephesus. We know there was a church in Philippi. We know there were groups of people actually active in their communities. Now, you know whether they were doing the right thing or the wrong thing. We read a lot in Paul where he's absolutely bitching out groups of people. Yeah, and <laughs> and, and just to, just as a side note, there's an awful lot wrong with Paul too. Yeah, well, and, and we've been we've been shited by some podcast listeners about that, you yeah. know, Paul. But but here's the deal: the amount of change that has happened from the time of Paul to now, I feel, has happened in the past ten months about sexual harassment. Yeah. Um. You yeah. know, we are changing at such a rapid pace. Yeah. And so I, I did want to mention that that uh, people that are judging uh, all all of us all the time by a standard of November 16th, 2017, something that someone did. Yeah. Now, now hitting on a 14-year-old girl and locking her in your car out in the woods was illegal at the right. time it, that Roy really Moore did this. Pretty, <laughs> and pretty, it's illegal now, yeah. right? Yes, yes, it is. Telling a joke uh, in the 60s. I mean, if you look at the Rat Pack in Vegas in the 1960s yeah. and the jokes that they told yeah. in Vegas in they the 1960s. They were horrifying. Fucking racist. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You would be, mm-hmm. and, and quite rightly, drummed out of polite society everywhere for saying anything that Dean Martin said in 1966. May I just it's, say, the Dean yeah. Martin roasts are still funny. <laughs> Most of the Dean Martin roasts are still funny. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, some of, some of the jokes are funny, and some of them are raunchy. Exactly. And some of them are offensive. Exactly. And some of them are not what you would tell today. Exactly. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and some of the raunchiest uh, speeches you hear from that dais are told by women. <laughs> so because they were part uh, of the, they were they were one of the boys. Absolutely. And you absolutely. had to, if that's you want to be that's anti- how you got to be one of the boys. If Andy you want to be Andy Dickinson, <laughs> you better hang with the boys. You and you drink and up swear with and tell stuff. sex jokes. That's with right. The, and that that's the other thing too is when you and and again there's no excuse for. Uh, his apology no. is is was woman centered and and Al Franken needed to apologize for what what she said happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, go back on YouTube and watch USO shows. And if you're going to judge what happens on the stage in an Al Franken USO show, you need to go watch more USO shows. Yeah, because the the. It is a uh, vaudeville show. That's what boys. it is. And for vaudeville the for the boys. And vaudeville is you know, the idea that you would walk into a strip club and say, I had no idea there were going to be naked women in this My room. God. You know? My God. Put some clothes right. on. No. no <laughs> wrong. No. Wrong. Raquel Welch was dancing around in a skirt in 1967 in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. That wasn't, you know, they were making jokes on the stage. That's not a skirt. It's a belt. You know, because it did go up higher than her crotch for a reason. <laughs> well, can I just yeah. can I just change the we're, context? We're getting but... off we're getting off Bible bitch for a minute. I, no, no, I just not, wanted to talk really. about the I historical mean, standards. The point of the, what the, <laughs> what let, what is happening and the rapid change that we're going through now. Let, yes. let me just say, Abraham Lincoln was a racist. Yeah. 
because everyone at the time was a racist, uh-huh. except unless you were an abolitionist. You were pretty much a racist. You pretty much believed. Well, in and there were supremacy. plenty of women in the abolition movement and in the uh, suffragette movement who who did not treat African American women as equals in any way. Right. And there was also within the the uh, abolitionist movement a number of people who felt uh, totally patronizing to African Americans oh, yeah. that they were children and yeah. childlike and yeah. and. And weak-minded, but they deserved our our compassion yes, right. and shouldn't poor, be slaves. Poor, yeah. but right, the, but the it wasn't being... because they were equal to white people. It was because, I mean, some people felt that way, but a lot of them felt like we have to take care of them because they are not equal to us. That's not the same thing. So that's the standard of the time. But go but right ahead. I'm I, I, no, I was going to, I'm actually looking at Frederick Douglass's eulogy of Abraham Lincoln. Mm. Because it it's it does sum sum up this idea of you know judged by his um, judged by the standards of the abolitionist mm-hmm. he was tardy and cold and aloof mm. and yeah. and and indifferent judged yeah. by the standards of his time judged mm-hmm. by what he had to be for as the president of a country yep. he was swift and bold and blah 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 both of those this is the thing both of those things can be true this is what I don't yeah, right this right. is what where. There's, there's a, there really is a divide between people who cannot hold two thoughts at once mm-hmm. and people who just know it needs to be one thing or the other, good mm-hmm. or evil, bad, you know, up or down, left or right. No, it, it is absolutely true that that the people who lived during Abraham Lincoln's time for the most time were white supremacists. North, yeah. south, east, west, that's what they were. That's what the country was. That's what our culture was. It is also true that Abraham Lincoln moved the country forward enormously. Mm-hmm. And deserves enormous credit from from going from a backwoods lawyer to becoming a great man, a man worthy of praise and remembrance and monuments, et cetera. A deeply flawed person because it is the perfection of the American dream that we're shooting for. Yeah. It's not yeah. here yet. It ain't going to be here for a while. Well, and I was going to say white supremacy was. Are you talking about yeah. in the past? What are you talking about? You know, like, we, yeah, we don't have that white supremacy problem anymore yeah. in the United well, States. I we think re- we're kind of. Well, we recognize it now, at least a lot yeah. of us do, as a problem. Yeah. yeah. As a yeah. thing that we should be opposed to mm-hmm. and try to deconstruct and get rid of and mm-hmm. flush and put on the ash heap of history um, as, as a structure. Not as a casual comment, but as a structural, uh, ment- uh, as a mental construct for seeing the world, it is it is toxic and kills everything it touches. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Yeah, and so this is not excusing anyone, but it is saying that if you want to apply the standards of the past to today, you're always going to trip yourself up. But let's not be stupid about what really went on during the past. But let's also not be dumb enough to accept um, the 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 narrative that. Bill Clinton was a monster, A, B, C, D. Now, Bill Clinton was also hunted like an animal. Yep. yep. He was, uh, unlimited amounts of money were spent to do, to destroy him. Every, yep. As I said, every mm-hmm. fishing shack, every rumor in Arkansas was investigated by someone who desperately wanted to destroy him. And the best they could come up with was he lied about having a consensual sexual relationship, which was highly inappropriate and probably uh, predatory um, by today's standards in the White House. That's yep. it. That's and, and he paid the price for it. He 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 paid the price in history. He's the first president to be impeached. He mm-hmm. uh, basically mm-hmm. had his entire administration leveled. He couldn't get anything passed or done. Um, he his name was sullied forever. Uh, he his people were bankrupted. Everything he ever did was dragged out in the public. I'd say that's pretty thorough investigation. So if you are now going, you know, the problem with we haven't talked about Bill Clinton enough. We just really haven't. No, we we've talked about him plenty. And, and and I'm willing to wait another 10 years for history, to, that history in the future, to judge what he did today. I would like to talk about the country I live in right now, the people who are running it right now, and the things they're doing to it right now, mm-hmm. and not get distracted with a lot of other things that are important, but can wait for another two years. Bill Clinton is never going to be president again. Yep. He's never going to be impeachable again. Hillary Clinton is not supposed to be pilloried. And crucified for the sins of her husband. That's just grotesquely unfair. Um, anyway, you know what we haven't done, Blue Gal? What haven't we done? We haven't touched on our notes at all. I know. Well, we had a lot in our in our heads to talk about. Don't let Joe Scarborough build a lifeboat. No. Of no. all people, 
No. For God's sakes. This goes out to uh, uh, Stephanie Miller. Stephanie and, Miller, who and, had Joe Scarborough on. Yeah. Such and, a nice guy. And to our friend Bob Seska, who we love dearly. Yes, we do. But people... We love, we love Stephanie Miller, too. Yeah, Stephanie was great. You but... just... You don't, don't put uh, Joe Scarborough saying, I'm an independent constitutional conservative because yeah. the Republican Party left me. I'm with you on the Republicans. The Republican Party is really problematic. And then, Stephanie Miller, please, please. I know you're busy. I know you have a million liberal um, dinners to go to with Carl Reiner or Rob Reiner and a bunch of other celebrities that I will never attend. And that's fine too. But you know what? In, in the middle of all of that, go over to the Washington Post and read his actual op-ed where he says, the problem is not Trump. The problem is both parties. Mm -hmm. This is something that you have on your own show condemned as ridiculous and toxic yep. and stupid and destructive. And can we please stop both sidering everything? That's all he's doing. All he's doing is getting on your side of the argument getting inside your perimeter so that when mm -hmm. you have your back turned, he can stick the knife in. That's and all I don't care doing. which Republican on that debate stage last year getting bullied by Donald Trump uh, would have been elected or would have been nominated if Trump wasn't there. Yep. All of them would be passing this crazy tax cut. Yes, they would. They, they would have all fought and probably they would succeeded. They would fall out. They would, they would put uh, Tom Price in HHS to destroy Obamacare. Yes, they would. They would have gotten rid of the Affordable Care Act by now. Yep. They're passing yep. massive plutocrat de uh, deficit busting. There taxing. are absolutely ways in which Donald Trump is outside the norm for a Republican president. I get that. And I appreciate that Joe Scarborough gets that, too. That does not mean that the Republican Party isn't full of horrible ideas that hurt people. Yeah, and Joe Scarborough and, didn't come to Jesus until Donald Trump went after his girlfriend. Right. Let's remember right. that. Well, Joe Scarborough. And I, I still want to know what the quid pro quo was on that because they have been applauded in uh, media analysis circles for how they handled that. Mm -hmm. And the way they handled that was a lot of quid pro quo of we'll have you on, we'll promote your book, we'll do something else. Right. Uh, just keep our story quiet until we're ready to tell it. Well, what did they promise Donald Trump? Because they sure let him call into their show a lot of times, mm -hmm. and they sure rehabilitated his, uh, his story and his candidacy over and over again during the course of that campaign. And there, in, there's clearly, you know, a, Oh, look, Donald got his groove back. Go look that up on crooks and liars, by the way, got his groove back. You'll find Mika Brzezinski talking with Michael Steele, about, Oh, look, Donald's got his groove back. He talks like no one else in politics. He really connects with people. No. And all of they, that, yeah. all of that is lost to history. All of that yep, is simply is. forgotten because now Joe Scarborough, and it, it, I'm not sure if it's, it's that sort of desperate seeking approval from someone other than your own group. Yeah. Even Joe Scarborough, Joe Scarborough thinks that we are worthy. Well, no, he doesn't. He thinks you're a patsy. Yeah. He thinks you're, well, oh, all I have to do is, is do the, the Tea Party thing, put change my clothes and put on a funny hat and say, I'm an independent right. now. You let me just get away with all the shit I've gotten away with and you'll, you'll applaud me for it? Oh, fuck, let's do that. Right. Um, right. And the and unfortunately, that's what's going on now. That's what's happening right now. There's a whole raft, and I mean that literally and figuratively, um, of these types of people, Michael Gerson, Rick Wilson, etc., who are all suddenly coming to Jesus, who are perfectly mm -hmm. happy to build this monster, perfectly happy to, to harvest it, perfectly happy to prosper from it. And once it finally hit that gag, that vestigial gag reflex way at the bottom of their esophagus, suddenly they've thrown their hands up and said, holy shit. There's a monster. Mm -hmm. And can I have a job on MSNBC now talking about it? Sure you can. Well, what about all the liberals who weren't lying sacks of shit all those years and didn't enable all this? No, no, we don't have time for them. They, you know, we, don't want, we don't want to talk to those people. Let's, let's just put all the, the Scarboroughs and the, the Sykeses on camera. Let them have all of this time to tell us all the shit that, uh, oh, it sounds familiar. Where have I heard that? Oh, that's what liberals were saying 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Well, there is a cons – that doesn't happen by accident. You don't yeah. say we're never going to put on people who were right all along. We're only going to put on people who came to Jesus last week. And we're absolutely not going to talk about anything that happened in the past. That doesn't happen by accident. That is a corporate decision. And it's a corporate decision because if you start tugging on that thread, a whole lot of people end up unemployed. Yep. And that's what they don't want to have happen. So let's talk about the news this week, shall we, Blue Gal? Uh, real quick, uh, Trump Russia is still a thing. It is. Boy, is it a thing. And uh, there's a book out. Uh, came out today, I think, called Collusion. 
Collusion, Secret Meetings, Dirty Money, and How Russia Helped Trump Win. Uh, it's by a Guardian journalist, and uh, they interviewed uh, Christopher Steele, who is, you know, the author of that dossier. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mr. Steele says, why would I invent this stuff? Right. <laughs> Why would I spend any time inventing this stuff? I've been spying on Russia for 30 years. And uh, there's a lot of dots that are connected with uh, Donald Trump Mm -hmm. and some Russian oligarchs and some real estate dealings that apparently uh, the investigators who are investigating are investigating. Yeah. And... (laughs) It's turning out, you know, I bought a house for $43.7 million and sold it back to a Russian oligarch for $100 million. Yay. I laundered their money for them. Really. Shake and and bake. uh, Apparently, we're looking at, uh, you know... The Mueller investigation, Mueller investigation is looking at all of it. Right. And so, uh, uh, the funniest comment I heard probably in the last couple of days is they're not connecting the dots anymore. There's just one big dot. There's just one big, huge dot. Yeah. It's called real estate money. Yeah. And uh, they've got the tax returns and yeah. they've got, yeah, it's just bad. Uh, I don't want to say anything about Julian Assange. Nope. So I'm going to skip right over that. Nope. No point in talking uh, about Julian Assange. Except white male patriarchy on, you know, it that's that everything about this whole story, by the way, yeah. is about white men maintaining control of the world. Yeah. That's what Putin is, Assange, Glenn Greenwald, everybody. Mark the standard calendar, people. This is the day yeah. I didn't bring up Glenn Greenwald, but Blue Cow did. <laughs> All right. So uh, the real af- quick, you read down what you want. Well, to the Affordable down. Care Act is up bigly. If I may coin a phrase, because I invented that phrase. I invented that word bigly. That's the thing I invented by myself, and that was me. Um, a lot of people say uh, it's very smartest. It's the smartest term they've ever heard anyone ever use. Uh, apparently, 1.5 million people have signed up, which is up nearly 500,000 people from last year, which is the good news. The bad news is is that the Republican uh, tax plan would gut all that. It has a poison pill designed to destroy the Affordable Care Act by removing the individual mandate. Because if you don't have an individual mandate, you can't pool risk. If you can't pool risk, everything goes up. If everything goes up, the whole market collapses. Very bad things happen. Republicans know this, but they're cruel, sadistic motherfuckers, and so they don't care. They like it. They like the fact that they're going to make millions of people suffer and millions of people cry. And once again, let's all remember what the Republican Party will remember for 10 years from now. This is the party. Made mom cry. Made my mom cry. That's their legacy. And let's That's make sure legacy. that that stays with them. By the way, uh, all phrases uh, that use the phrase people have learned will hold <laughs> to account, history will record, uh, those are all no longer functional because we have lived through enough political history to know that nobody ever held Bush account for anything. Nobody ever held the people who obstructed the Obama administration account for anything. Um, there's a whole – cottage industry in making sure the people who fuck this country up are never held to account for anything. So let's quit pretending that history out there somewhere, capital H, will hold people to account for anything because it won't. You and I You know who's going to hold people accountable? Women Women. voters. Yeah. Especially (laughs) African-American women. But broadly speaking, women voters are going to save us. And I appreciate that immensely. Um, Apparently, the Trump administration rejected 4,000 late DACA renewals. Even yeah, they've, they've actually this afternoon reversed on that oh, because they didn't want the parades around their building. Yeah. yeah. yeah that were so. in the mailbox. So they decided, yeah. okay. Yeah, they were, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, the, they're, they're still going to deport as many of them as they can, I expect, but uh, we'll just have to fight them in court on that one. Donald Trump can't remember which mass shooting he is, he is giving people Honestly. prayers and thoughts and prayers for, so he mixed them up. That's how many mass shootings we have in this country. You can't keep them straight anymore. Even even if you're the head of the government and you can have a whole department that does nothing but keep track of mass shootings, you still can't fucking do it. Also because he's an idiot. Let's face it. Uh, Jeff Sessions uh, told the the Judiciary Committee he didn't lie under oath, but can't remember anything. Can't remember if his name is Jeff Sessions, if he has feet, if he was born, if he lives on the planet Earth. Remembers nothing about anything, which makes him a perfect um, attorney general. Mm -hmm. If you have no functioning memory... And all we know about you is you're a creepy little sadist who likes hurting people and you're a racist asshole, but you can't remember whether or not you're actually clued with Russians to fuck this country up and sell us out. You know, hey, why not make that man the the top law enforcement officer in this country? Um, The U.S. Embassy in Moscow. I love this story. I love this story so much. The U.S. Embassy in Moscow has hired a security firm. The Trump administration has hired a security firm owned by Putin's former KGB counterintelligence director to run security. That's right. We have officially hired the wolves to guard the chicken coop. 
We are uh, a Soviet satellite nation. We really are. When it comes to Donald Trump. Yep. And I I dare you out there, dear listener, to send that information out to Crazy Uncle Liberty, because it's Mm going to be a hell of a Thanksgiving, I imagine. Yeah. And he will either return with it's fake news or Mm -hmm. what about Hillary and Uranium One? Uh, There there are no other responses left in the meatheads of the reprogrammable meat bags. There just aren't. Well. And they all want Shep Smith fired for actually saying anything that it was factual on his show about Uranium One. So, because you're not supposed to cross the streams like that. It might be Donald Trump Jr. Uh, who's the actual dumb one. It might not be Elwick. It might be Donald Trump Jr. who corresponded with WikiLeaks during the campaign. Interchangeable. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> but there's this whole kind of, I talked to WikiLeaks, I got some shit, I got some backdoor shit, and then I, I, I they told me stuff and I solicited them. And he just got in. For, and then suddenly Donald Trump is is tweeting about John Podesta's emails 15 minutes after WikiLeaks tells Trump Jr. what's mm, coming. Right. And then uh, right. Donald Trump trusts Vladimir Putin more than he trusts his own intelligence people, more mm-hmm. than he trusts the American people. And really, he spent the entire trip um, completely shitting on every American value, every American virtue, laughing about the idea of a free press and and jerking off foreign tyrants. Can you explain to me how is it just dumb criminals that they just feel like it's OK to tweet this stuff and tw- the, the amount of dumb criminals out there in the Trump administration yeah. who email and tweet the stupid shit that they're doing that's illegal? If I may, if I may Blue Gal, let's quote yes. from uh, Batman, the movie. <laughs> Um, Batman Returns, I believe, is the movie. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure where it stands on the 50 greatest uh, superhero movies. Okay. Maybe number 17, <laughs> I'm guessing, 18, something like that. Yeah. Um, Jim Gordon, who's being offered a bribe and being told, and he says, I don't take a bribe and take a bribe. And no, and he's, he's told, if you don't take money, people are going to get suspicious. And he says, I'm not a rat. Mm-hmm. And in a town this bent, who was there a rat to anyway? Who's there to rat to anyway? If the attorney yeah. general is the biggest, Can't recall is the biggest anything? fucking yeah. criminal of them all, if yeah. all of them are criminals, if you if you own the government, what do you have to fear? Who's going to enforce the law? Would every, well, and, Paul Ryan? Paul Ryan is such got such a hard on for for gutting the government, destroying the government, and giving massive tax increases to the people who own his ass. He will he will suck Donald Trump's dick in Times Square on New Year's Eve if that's what it takes. With an American flag shoved up his ass. He would absolutely do that, and he'll get up and wipe his chin off and go, what? What? Yeah, yeah. Well, and and Roger, or Roger Stone yeah. tweeted at midnight last night that it was Al Franken's turn in the barrel mm-hmm. before the woman came out this morning to, t- to make her accusation. Mm-hmm. How did he know that? Uh, and why did he tweet it? Well, you know what? That's what I want to know. You know what? You know who you should ask about that? Who? Brent uh, Brent Taylor. Who's Brent Taylor? He's the uh, the blogger who never practiced, who never tried to case. Oh yeah. <laughs> because before he became a blogger who hated Hillary Clinton and never tried a yeah. case in his life, and now he's right. been nominated and might very well become a uh, uh, judge for life mm-hmm. uh, because all the Republicans voted for him. Completely unqualified, no doubt about the fact that he's unqualified and a nut job. Before he did all that, he was a paranormal investigator. <laughs> so. He might just well, be able to tell you about the time travel aspects of knowing about shit before it happens. Because, as we know, maybe Roger Stone is tight with White Rose. We don't know. Oh, we're just speculating. It's it's a thing we talk about in bed at night. We're not screaming about the fucking Republicans. Finally, we, and this we, is just. We, I'm going to tell people that don't want a spoiler for Mr. Robot to fast forward for one minute. Yes. There is a scene in the latest episode of Mr. Robot. I'm yes. telling you now. Yes. Go ahead and fast forward. Fast forward, people. It takes place at Mar-a-Lago. Yes, it does. Okay. And uh, it. let me just say, uh, this is the third or fourth reference to Donald Trump. Yeah. And the fact that White And now Rose, you can listen again. <laughs> that they're, going to, that they're going to get this buffoon elected, because wouldn't that yeah. be a big joke? Okay. Now, that, no more spoilers. Okay, we're done. Finally. <laughs> end of spoilers here. Uh, finally, you know Janine Pirro, the the woman who was mm-hmm. recorded at seventy eight and is constantly running at thirty three and a third. She mm-hmm. has this kind of half her angry. She's always half drunk. Paul Ryan, you need to resign because you're a bad man. She's judge Janine Pirro because you know who isn't a judge, and she's a Fox News lunatic who has her own talk show because who doesn't? Right. Guess who's coming to town to raise money for our local Republican Party, honey? Gene Pirro. Judge Janine Pirro. Yes, she Why? is. Why? Because they couldn't get Herman Cain. And <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding. Because Herman Cain oh. said, 
oh, no, I can get a better deal some other place. So they couldn't get Herman Cain to come in. You mean they invited Herman Cain and yeah. then they settled for Gene Pirro? That's exactly right. That's in, exactly. At the Illinois Republican Party. The, Illinois, the, the Sangamon County Republican Party. Not just the Illinois. County the Republican Sangamon Party. Sangamon County Republican Party. Has Isn't enough it? money to ha- to hire a Fox News speaker. That probably yeah. is costing him six figures. Well, it's 100 bucks a plate. Yeah. Uh, so if I had a spare hundred dollars, yeah, I, I would go out buy anyway. a big bottle of scotch. I, and I would, wouldn't let you. Go I would. Anyway. I would find the point in Sangamon County furthest away from there and stay there. Yeah. Although I might greet her at the airport in a, in a little cap, say that I'm her driver and drive her to I don't know where, maybe the. Oh my god! But yeah, no, it's, it's uh, yeah, no. This is this happens from time to time. Um, yeah. People come to town and it's hilarious who they are and it's hilarious how. You know, and you can just imagine the the local Republican Party being, we got Piro. <laughs> Piro. Yeah, we got Aww. her. We got her. We nailed her. She's coming to town. We're going to raise some big money for the Republican Party to reelect Rodney fucking Davis. <laughs> you know, that's that's who these that's who, Seriously. Huh? So it's not Yeah. Again, it's not Paul, just the Paul top Ryan's of the butt boy, Rodney Davis. Yeah. Okay. And so way down at the bottom of the party, oh, man. you have people who think getting Janine Pirro to come talk to their little group and raise money is a get. Is a get is a net positive. Okay. And All that's right. again when we I'm say saying. we don't we don't live on a glass mountain. We don't live <laughs> no. on the No, we central live right here next to the cornfield. We, cor- we this is our world. Uh, oh, anyway, that's, man. and there was a ton more news this week, but frankly, it, the hour grows late. Well, now that the Huffington Post owns Very the Bible, much. you know, what are we going to do? They own the Bible like, now. They don't, well, they, they don't Thank own the Bible. You, you made me laugh. They don't own the Bible. They aggregate the Bible. That way, they, they don't aggregate have to, the Bible. They don't have they to pay do. Matthew or Mark. And then Google Mark. announces it. They don't yes. have to pay Matthew or Mark or Luke a dime. No, they don't. No. Nope. They just aggregate nope. their work and report it to the rest of us. That's citizen journalism, Blue Gal. Citizen journalism. Citizen journalism. We want your story. Yeah, okay. Uh, each week we post to our Facebook page and website, an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Buddy. Oh my God! Hey, Buddy. Go see Buddy. Buddy likes turkey. Buddy is huge. Mm-hmm. Buddy has a Thanksgiving belly on him. As my sister always said, a fat cat is a happy cat, mm-hmm. and he is beautiful, and we love him. And he's spread out and looks like he's just uh, relaxing in the sunshine, waiting for the next meal of turkey to come. And so go visit Buddy at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget. Uh, I want to say gourmet coffee guideline. We had a very good email from a listener this week about gourmet coffee guideline. Mm-hmm. You know, our gourmet coffee guideline is if you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. Uh, this correspondent said, you know, I don't drink coffee, but I do uh, subscribe to Hulu and Hulu is four ninety nine a month. Oh. And if your listeners are out there and they can afford $4.99 a month for Hulu for commercial free TV then they can afford $4.99 for commercial free well except for our fake sponsors and our contests but you know yes they can afford the cornfield resistance for $4.99 a month they can do that sure you know and and I thought you know that's a good point if the Hulu guideline if you if you get Hulu if you can afford that Send four ninety nine a month to us too, uh, and don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. We also believe in shopping Amazon with our link. If your alternative is a big box store, it's now time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from Foxwise Biz. We're doing this contest to thank you. Thank you for donating to our podcast, supporting our podcast, corresponding with us. Yeah. Uh, You can look at these uh, beautiful bracelets at our website to see how great they look. We are giving away a bracelet that says resist and has snowflakes on either side along with our URL. They are from foxwise.biz. And if you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, you can use the coupon code DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders. Foxwise.biz. We are running this contest again as a way of saying thank you to our donors. Our winner this week is Barry W. from North Carolina. Barry! Barry sends us five bucks a month yeah, via thank PayPal. You, Barry. Thank you, Barry. Uh, he signed up uh, in the spring of 2017. You will be receiving a cuff bracelet and a $10 gift card to donors choose that you can donate to a school in your area or a classroom that is looking for help in an area you support. 
Uh, we are waiting for the next uh, box of bracelets to get here. Everybody who won before Barry, it, your bracelet's in the mail. We got it out this week. So, By the way, can uh, I mention we're one We're waiting for thing. the next shipment. Huh? Uh, What's there, that? there is a, uh, a video out there of a congresswoman mm -hmm. taking apart a, uh, the person there repping the tax plan, the Republican tax plan, mm -hmm. saying, basically, give me a yes or no answer. If a teacher tries to write off the stuff that he or she buys for their class, can they write it off? No. If a corporation wants to buy office supplies, can they write it off? Yes. Yeah. And, it was... and she goes on everything. And yeah. every, every, every individual tax break has been taken away and every corporate tax break has been uh, Kept in... has been maintained. Maintained yeah. or beefed up. Yeah. And she went yeah. – but teachers fall into that category. Teachers um, – who just have to get some construction paper and pencils and mm -hmm. glue for their class. Um, that's Can't write that off as a business no. expense under the Republican tax And that's the margin they're operating under. That is how desperate yep. things are for some people who teach our children in this country. Well, and that's why sometimes I'll look up on Donors Choose. You can actually look up science fiction if you yeah. want to buy some science fiction books or look up um, coats. They, ha they actually have a comfort yeah. uh, category for coats and scarves and socks mm -hmm. and underwear for their... I mean, they're... There are teachers buying clothes for their kids. And there's, a, there's a direct, students. there's direct feedback. Yeah. I mean, this is this yeah. is a oh, thing yeah. where you pick yeah. the people, you decide the amount, and you immediately find them, you know, grateful. And they and... E they email you to thank you. Yeah, yeah. You will you will hear from them, and you will see pictures of their classrooms with the stuff that that you contributed to. And you don't have to buy the whole thing. That's the other thing is everyone is contributing to these classrooms. And so you can see that maybe you gave five or ten bucks, other people gave as well, and you wound up buying. The other thing I look up is basic supplies, and yep. you will find that student teachers buying pencils and erasers and whatever else paper they need for their classrooms. Uh, this is we are living in an era of austerity for children. Right for poor children, and that's a tragedy. For poor middle that's, class children. Yep. And uh, there's a whole there's a whole lot of us who ignore that every day that 20 percent of children are in poverty. And it's time to stop ignoring that. And one way we do that is Jonas Jews uh, to cope with this while we're making things better. Congratulations, Barry W. We appreciate you. And uh, as soon as we get those cuffs and bracelets in, we'll be sending you one and a gift card. Mm -hmm. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. There's a lot of information at proleftpod.com. Our uh, angel nerd, yes. the LOGOP, has yes. worked very hard. Yes. Uh, we heard yeah. from one of our listeners that they bought a T-shirt, and I said, well, you know, the number one seller of all the T-shirts is Both Sides Don't, that T-shirt. And they said, that's the one I got. <laughs> so... <laughs> Good choice. Good choice, man. Good choice. Good choice. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. I already read this, didn't I? Yes, you did. And postal information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Yeah. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? You know, the Internet Kitties just want everyone to forget about politics for a few hours and have a really, really happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you, Drift Glass. Love you, darling. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.